So a couple of days ago, we saw the release of Elementor Pro version 2.9 beta. Now, most importantly, this is still the beta version. And that means if you want to test this out, which you're free to do so, please do not do this on a public site, a site that you've created that's live and people visit. Only test this out in a development environment because it's still probably got bugs and little quirks in it, and it could ultimately crash your site if you use this beta version. So with that little warning out of the way, what exactly do we have in Elementor Pro version 2.9, the beta? Only a couple of things, and none of these are earth shattering. If, in my opinion, the release of Elementor Free 2.9 and the theme style kits, that was a much bigger update. But we do have a couple of little things that I think are quite useful. And in this video, I'm gonna give you my opinion on them. I'm gonna show you how they work and see some of the quirks that we currently have in this beta version. So please do not jump in and start testing this out on a live site. Have a play about to your heart's content on an offline site. But like I say, when it comes to a released site, do not do it. Okay, so the first thing we have is the ability now to set dynamic colors. So how does this kind of work? Well, we have the values that we could always use the color picker on and we could sample colors and do all those kinds of things from our color palettes, but we couldn't dynamically set those values, but now we can. So this is something that's kind of useful, but if you tie it into a video released a couple of days ago, maybe a week or two ago, about using ACF, Advanced Custom Fields, and the options in the Pro version, where we can globally set values and we can assign those to various different template elements. One of the things I said in there was, I'd love to see the ability to set colors using this method. Well, now in 2.9 of Pro, we can do that. So let me just take you over into the dashboard and show you how this works. Now, I'm not gonna go over how we create options pages and all that. I've covered that in its own dedicated tutorial, which you can check out if you take a look here in the corner, and I'll put a link in the description below. Now, before we do start, there is one little quirk that I found with this. If I set the colors globally inside the templates, inside the normal widget editor, everything works exactly as you expect. The problem is if I try to set this on the theme level, so in other words, using the theme styles, those values don't stick for some reason. But like I say, this is a beta version. So I'm sure once the final is released, this will be something that will be picked up on and rectified. So everything that I show you will work flawlessly. So let's just jump over now and take a look at the option settings and how we could use this with the global colors. So this is the customs options page that I've set up. As you can see, we've got three different colors on there, the background color, the body color, and the heading. And this is just a, a simple color picker that I've set up as part of advanced custom fields. Now, if you'd like to take a look at how I've created this custom dashboard or anything else covered, I'll put links in the description below to these videos and it'll give you a good heads up on how to do it. But like I say, we've just set these up to assign basic values in there and set a fallback value if nothing is set. So once you've kind of done that, if we come back into the dashboard, this is inside a normal page. And as you can see on the left-hand side, we've got the editor. So if I come in and I select one of these, so let's just say, for example, I choose this heading. You'll see now if we come up to the Styles tab on the left-hand side, we've got the text color. So let's just get rid of what's in there. And as you can see, we can still choose our colors from our normal method, but we now have the dynamic tags option. So if we click on there, we can choose how we want to grab that data. You can see we've got a post custom field, or we've got in this example, ACF. And you can see we've got ACF color picker fields. So I've already assigned these as color picker fields. I'm going to click on that. Once we've done that, we've now set it to tell it we want to use an ACF color picker and you'll see the color goes back to be in black. That's because we haven't actually referenced what particular value we want to pull from. Click on the little wrench icon and we can set the key value. So click on there. And as you can see, these are all set up as options as part of advanced custom fields. So I've set those up. You can see there's the background, the body text and the heading, the three values I just showed you. We're going to choose this and we're going to say heading one for this example. And as you can see, that now immediately pulls up the color. So that's now been dynamically set up. So if we just update this page, and what I'll do is I'll open this page up so we can preview it. And there we go, there's the page and you can see our heading now has pulled that color in. And if we come back to our options page and we change that heading value, and we'll set it to be orange, for example, and save that. We'll come back out once we've saved that, refresh our page, and that changes to orange. So you can see it's very, very simple how we can set these global values. But if we jump back into this, the thing that currently is a bit limiting in this example is we'd have to set this on the widget level every single time and that could be a little time consuming and prone to error. So what we can do is come over and we're gonna come into the theme style. 
Now inside the theme style, as you can see, we can control backgrounds, typography, and so on. So anywhere we can set these color values, we now have the dynamic option. So text colors, background colors, and so on. If you wanted to, let's just get rid of that. If we wanted to set a global background color, we can click on the dynamic tags. And again, we can reference those ACF fields, click we can just choose which key we want to use, which will be the background color. Now, like I say, currently there's a bit of a bug with this that if I save this, and we'll hit update, it doesn't make any changes to the site. And if we come back in and click on the little wrench icon, even though it's still there, once we come out of this page, and we'll exit out of the theme style. So we go back into the normal editor, and we'll come back into the theme style again, and we'll open this back up. I click on the little wrench and you can see my key is gone. So it's not saving the key, but once this has been rectified and it's all working in, the, in the, an update, we're going to find that we can set these on the global values in our theme style. So this makes the theme styles even more powerful. And like I say, we can reference any values we want just by using that option. So the heading one through to six, we can do our link colors, our body color, our background color, all those kinds of things, including buttons, if you want to set form field colors. So if you tied this into something like the options that we set up before, you could start to build out a fully customizable theme that you could then give to the end user, or you could do kind of whatever you want. Let's just say you were using Elementor and you were rolling this out based upon a default styling setup that you configured, but you wanted the end user to be able to upload their own logos, upload their own color schemes, all those kinds of things. This, when it's all working, is a great starting point to make that a reality. So that's the basics of how we can use these dynamic colors. We can use it on a widget level, or when it's all working fully, we can use it on the theme styles level, which to me makes it considerably more powerful. Okay, so now we've seen how to dynamically set those color values. There's one thing I quickly want to say. If the developers of Elementor are watching this at all, and you're taking on any kind of uh, ideas, should we say, Please consider making every value that's available inside the editor something we can change and set dynamically. This just means that we can create custom dashboards for our users, custom theme panels for things that we set up. We can make those available on the front end or the back end if we want to through options using tools like ACF. And then we can just stop our end users, our clients, getting in and start twiddling about with things they really don't need to. It makes a much more streamlined user experience for our end user, for our clients with the ability to set all these different values globally and dynamically. With that out of the way, what's next? Okay, so now we've seen the colors. The next big thing that's been brought in is now we no longer need to jump out of the page or the content we're editing to edit a template file. So let's just take an example. You've got your page that you're working on and you've got your header and your footer, which are set up in Elementor Pro Theme Builder and you assign these globally. Normally what you'd have to do if you want to edit either of those templates is close down the page you're working on, go to your theme editor, open up that template and make changes. So it's a little bit time consuming. It's not the best way of working. Well, in 2.9 of Pro, they've brought in the ability to immediately edit any of those template files inside the same editor. You simply click on it, open it up and start editing. Save it, go back to your page. So let me just show you what I mean. Let's just jump over to the dashboard with an example page and I can demonstrate what I'm talking about. So it's very easy to enable the ability to edit any of these template files. I'm currently just looking at a page that uses a template file for the header and also for the footer at the bottom. Now, normally, like I say, you'd have to jump out of this, but all we need to do now is come over any of these templates. We get this little yellow head editing sort of section. We can click to edit the header. And once you do that, we're now into the header to edit things. So if we want to make changes inside here, we could do that. So if we want to set the background color, for example, to be different, we come in and we say we want the background color to be a dark blue, for example. We'll adjust that. There we go. So we're happy with that color. All we need to do now is click on update. And that will now update that template. And that's allowed us to edit that section. Now, all we need to do is come back in to start editing the rest of the page. You can see when we come over the page, we now get the option to edit page. Or if we scroll down, we could edit the footer or we could just carry on editing the header. So let's just come back into our page, click to edit the page, and then you see we switch back and we're now just editing the page with the template, it changes, are all in place. So super simple, but a real big time saver for working with your templates inside pages and posts and layouts. Very, very quick and very easy. 
So the third and final thing I quickly want to cover, and I'm just going to quickly just explain what this is and show you how you access it, is the ability now to set global CSS that will apply to your entire site, all done inside the Elementor editor. So this is something that if you want to make changes and you're happy hand coding, you could get in and make these CSS changes. Now this is another one of those areas that I would absolutely love to see associated with dynamic data. Because again, using that options page as an example, I'd love to be able to set up an area inside there that lets the more experienced user go into a custom options panel for a theme, set all the values, and if they want a custom code, any CSS into it, they could do that directly inside that lovely looking options page that's part of their client portal. So that's just something I'd like to see. But again, let's just quickly jump over, take a look at where this is, and basically what it's gonna allow us to do. So getting access to the global CSS options is a little different to what you may have done before. What we need to do is come over into the hamburger menu on the top left and come down to our theme styles. Because what we're doing is we're basically working on the theme level. So instead of changing things to, for example, just a widget, you're setting this globally. So this is the kind of thing that you may have been used to if you were using themes like Astra and Ocean WP, and you have your custom CSS there, you could then globally change various different aspects. So just bear in mind that this is one of those things that if you are setting values inside you and you're setting them on the widget level, the widget level will take precedence, or well, that's my understanding at least. So if we come up, you can see custom CSS. Now we can just type in and use any of the CSS that we want. So if you want to get in there and start hand coding your CSS, this will, like I say, affect the entire theme where applicable. Now, I'm not going to cover this in this video because there's already a ton of people that have created content on this 2.9 beta release. For me, I'm much more interested in the dynamic aspects, which, like I say, are pretty minimal in this update, but hopefully they'll be set in the ground for future updates. But that's how you access this global custom CSS set of options. Well, there we go. Elemental Pro 2.9 beta, all the new features that have been added into it. What do you think? For me, I think it's okay. There's a couple of nice two halves in there, but nothing that I would consider groundbreaking. I think they're setting the path now for how they're going to move forward and how they're going to implement all these theme styles and how we can get a much more unified way of working, which speeds up our work process, which is in itself a very good thing. But what do you think? Is this the kind of thing you think is a meh update? There's a couple of nice little things, but nothing that's going to be groundbreaking. Or are these things that you've been waiting for for quite some time? Let me know in that comment section below. Let's get that conversation started. You tell me what you think, and I'd love to hear it. As always, all the applicable links for anything covered in this video are all in that description below. My name is Paul C. This has been WP Tats, and until next time, take care.